Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Tech Entertainment, where today I will be modifying this baby monitor from 1995. So I had found this at a local thrift store, and as soon as I saw it, I knew that I needed it. Um, in order to explain why I wanted it so bad, I need to show you this. So what is this? Well, it's a project I had started about a year ago. Um, and it's a clock that uses a CRT display. And I decided that I wanted to just not scrap it. I, I just want to keep it as is. But I want to create a version 2. So this project failed for many reasons. Um, one is the... CRT that I got, it has RF in only, and that's what that little silver box down there is. It's a um, RF modulator because the Arduino Nano outputs a composite signal, and that gets modulated so that uh, this TV can pick it up because it does not have a composite in. I could not modify it to have a composite in, unfortunately. Another thing is, is this used a linear regulator, which got extremely hot. Um, that's this up up here. Mainly I wanted to recreate it in a more proper professional way, redesigning it all. So that's where this comes in. See, I want to make a version 2 of this CRT clock and actually finish it. So as soon as I saw this at the store, um, once I realized what it was, uh, I knew that since this is wireless there must be a demodulator for the um, signal that this would be outputting. Um, and I knew that this demodulator, it's probably going to be outputting composite because this would be modulating composite. This is probably just a composite camera here. Um, so with this composite signal, it's much higher quality than RF. I don't need to modulate the RF signal like with, um, the CRT clock version one. So that's what this video is about today. It's um, actually hacking this thing so that I can input my own composite signal. Now before I open this up, I do want to um, mention something that is interesting. Uh, this cord here, it actually runs all the way to uh, two, here yeah, I, can, I can get them, runs to two uh, RCA jacks. And this is actually composite video. So I know that there is composite video somewhere within this and I can actually plug it into my capture um, a capture card here and you can see my lovely face here and there's the camera so that's just that's just showing that this this is actually working so let's take this apart and check it out see what I can do um, I should probably unplug it before I take it apart. This is probably one of the more uh, cheaper CRTs I've ever taken apart here, but um, it's it's all right. It's it'll it'll serve its purpose. So right here, I'm assuming is the demodulator because the antenna goes right into it. So here's the bottom of the demodulator, and I've actually lied. I have already um, opened this up and checked if I could input uh, composite. Now, right here. This little trace here is the composite output of the demodulator. So I'm going to reenact how I actually found out that this was the composite output. Alright, so right now I have um, my oscilloscope probe connected up to that pin that I was saying was composite. I, I uh, turned this on. Um, I just want to say that CRTs do have uh, dangerous high voltages, so don't do this. So essentially what I did was go through all of the pins on the demodulator with my oscilloscope probes and eventually I found this. What you're seeing right now is the composite signal. So I knew that it must be that pin. So what I'd like to try to do now is actually remove the entire um, demodulator. Uh, desolder all of these and remove the entire thing.
there we go. So here is the demodulator fully taken out. Um, I think I can open it real quick. All right, so now with the top off, I, we can take a closer look. So there's a few integrated circuits, um, probably another tuner there. Uh, so I think that the this is the antenna input. Um, but I'm sure that I could uh, get this working not inside of this. And that means that I could I could still use the wireless camera. So now it looks uh it looks pretty empty without that um massive demodulator in there. So uh now I'm just gonna power it on and make sure that I have a blank screen because I I mean, I, I checked over some of the things, but I don't think that this was necessary to the function of this device, so I'm going to check that right now. Alright, well, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. This isn't how it... what you're seeing isn't actually how this looks. Um, it's, just a, it's just a blank screen. So this is working um, as expected. Uh, so now let's try to input our own signal. Alright, so for testing purposes, I decided I'll rig up something real quick. Um, I have the proto board right here like that. I have some right angle uh, pin headers right here that'll just go like that. Um, I'll cut these to size. And then I'll have an audio input and a video input. Alright, so I'm going to build this up real quick and I'll talk to you after. So I've figured out what each pin is. So um, the audio comes in here. These three are ground. Um, this was video in, um, these two are ground, and actually I went out a little bit out of order there, but, uh, this is plus 9 volts. Um, oh, this is another ground here. Uh, this is fine-tuning. So this is the fine-tuning and also um, channel select. So you can uh, set either channel 3 or 4 um, say you have two baby monitors or whatever, you don't want them uh, cross-talking. And then here is our antenna in. Alright, so that is the pinout. And here's the board. So unfortunately, um, this board isn't long enough to extend the full way, so I'm just gonna have it here. So I'll have, um, might add a little LED, a little power LED here. And then, uh, yeah, this is this is what I'm gonna. So I'm gonna design my circuit. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna write out the schematics since it's, it's simple enough. I don't need to use um I don't need to use any CAD software for this. So uh, if I remember correctly, it's gonna be a little red LED, so I might as well 
We'll put the little red arrows. And then this is nine volts and it doesn't need to be really bright, so I'm just gonna whack in there a two K. Might be it might be too dim. I I can adjust that later. And that'll just go right over into that ground. And then, so we don't need anything from fine tuning. I'm just gonna write an X if they're not connected. This is what I'm used to on uh on KiCad. All right. So these three, I'll connect these up. And I'm gonna have a connector here. Forget exactly what it what they look like, but um, so that's our ground, and this is our video in, and then that that's a little little box there. All right, now I gotta make the same thing. Geez, um, I'm actually gonna have the audio go to a variable resistor just because I don't know how loud it should be and I don't want to I don't want to blow the thing out so um, I'm just gonna leave this disconnected and this will go into my little connector here I'm just gonna use RCA connectors All right, so this this will go to ground again, and then that goes right there. All right, so excuse the crappy drawing, but that's essentially what I'm going to do. This is video. It's audio. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Um, this will be. I think I have a 300k. This might be a 300k ohm. And I'm going to go make it on this little board here. So something that's a little annoying about these connectors is uh, they, don't, they don't fit through the holes here. So I'm going to have to drill some, drill some holes real quick, make it a little bit bigger. So I found a potentiometer that would work. Unfortunately, um, all five of the holes need to be drilled. So that's I'm gonna I'm gonna go do that. All right. So I drilled the holes. Um, let's see. I mean, they they should fit. So it's all soldered now. Um, I think all that's left is just the uh, the LED, and then I just need to connect everything together.
So I definitely could have lowered the LED a little bit, but um, yeah. So there's the the LED and the resistor are all soldered in. So now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna connect everything else up. So this white cable here, I'm going to use this for the um, video connection because it will help reduce any RF interference. I'm gonna I'm gonna check my work first and then put it into the, the device. So I'm going to plug it in, and that LED should turn on. Okay, it does. Good. All right. Let me go get um, let me go get a video source. So I got this little uh, plug-in TV thing that you've seen before on the channel. Uh, let's see. A. Hey. All right. Let's uh, fix the camera a little bit. All right, so that's about as good as I can get it. Let's see about volume. Do we get any volume? Doesn't seem like it. Let's see, what uh, What if I... Oh, I don't have the speaker plugged in. Well, that would be one thing. Um, <laughs> that's nice. I'm going to try adjusting that, uh, that potentiometer I added in. Um, there does appear to be a little bit of ghosting, no pun intended. Uh, I don't know what that could be. I'm assuming um, could be a uh, bad cap. I can figure that out sometime, but oh wow, that, that was horrible. <laughs> um, but anyways, it is working. Uh, the screen's a little off-center. I can fix that eventually. Um, that potentiometer I had to basically uh, give it full open in order for it to work. And I think that just about wraps up this episode of Tech Entertainment. If you found this interesting, feel free to subscribe to see the future of this project. Um, in part two, I plan on interfacing a ESP32 with this and actually getting some form of user interface going. And see you guys in the next episode.